Do you want to be able to take pictures like this using your phone? Beginning today, I'm starting a brand new series on tips to improve your mobile photography, focusing on landscape, food and still life, and portraits. You don't need an expensive camera for that. All you need is the camera in your pocket, your mobile. I want you to be able to take your camera and go out and take amazing photographs. Today, we're gonna focus on landscape photography. So the first thing we wanna do is clean the lens of our camera. We carry this phone everywhere with us. So the lint from our clothes, the oil from our hands is stuck to the lens. But to be able to get clear and non-blurry images, it's very important to clean the lens. So take a microfiber cloth or in a pinch, use your t-shirt and just get the lens clean. Let's start with the tip. One of the most important and my own favorite tip is to pay attention to light. When you're in a new location, I want you to scout out the light. Look at how the light is falling on the landscape. Look at the direction that the sun is rising and setting. Look at how the light is illuminating the landscape around you. Sometimes you can find the most interesting textures in nature just because of the way the sunlight hits it at a certain point in time. My second tip is take a moment for yourself and look at the different angles around you. One of the biggest mistakes I've seen people do is just picking up their camera and holding at their eye level and clicking a picture. I feel like you're missing out on so many different and unique perspectives because you're just not looking. Look up, look down. If you're at the base of a mountain, look up to towards the mountain because that would be a very unique perspective. If you're at the edge of a mountain and looking down at the valley, rather than shoot the valley at eye level itself, tilt the camera down, look down and see if there's a unique perspective to be found there. Move around a little bit, bend your knees, bring your camera to ground level and bring that texture of the ground as a foreground when you click the rest of the landscape. You will find so many different and unique perspectives if you just change your position. Keep in mind if you're shooting an image and there's an unwanted object right in the middle of your frame, move around a little bit, move towards your side and see if there's a frame that you can find where you can take the object out of the frame or maybe make it less visible so the focus of the viewer won't be right at that object. You might just be very surprised as to the composition you can find. My third tip is turn on your grids. What the rule of thirds essentially means is that you're using a three by three grid and placing the most interesting elements in an image at the intersection of these lines. I utilize this rule very often if I'm shooting in horizontal or landscape mode. But as they say, rules are meant to be broken. <laughs> and, and so if you are shooting vertical, I actually find that placing a subject, especially a person in a landscape, smack dab in the center of the frame creates a beautiful and stunning composition. My fourth tip is underexpose the image. That is, reduce the brightness in an image as you're taking the photo. The native camera settings when you just pick up and click an image are to actually overexpose the image a little bit. So your highlights tend to get blown out. For example, the sky is usually washed out. You won't find the beautiful textures of the clouds that are seen in the sky. So underexpose the image a little bit so you can bring these beautiful textures in the highlights in the sky. This is especially true when you're shooting a sunset. If you just take a picture of the sunset, the sky will be completely washed out. But underexposing the image just a tiny bit will help you in retaining the beautiful textures in the sky during the sunset. What that would do is it would darken your shadows. But keep in mind, you can always lift them up during your post-processing or editing of the image. My fifth tip for you is to use leading lines to create depth in an image. You can use these lines to direct the viewer's eye towards the main subject of your image. The next tip I have for you is a pro tip which you can use to create depth and dimension in an image. Shoot through something. I love to find something like leaves or a window or a frame that I can shoot through 
to be able to capture my subject. It creates multiple layers in an image, thus helping you to create that dimension and depth, and also keeps the images from looking flat and boring. Another tip I have is to use the metry to create balance in an image so that it can be a more aesthetically pleasing shot. My next tip is for mobile users who have a night mode on their camera, like the new iPhone 11. This is a mode you can utilize to create beautiful light trails at night or even a smoother motion of waves if you're shooting in ocean. If you have an older iPhone and do not have the night mode, you can also utilize your live view. Make sure you always have the live view on, by the way, because it allows you to be able to choose from different frames. It almost clicks a short film, so it has lots of different frames that you can choose from in case you're not happy with the shot that you took. But an option that the live view also gives you is long exposure. So you can smooth out water in waves or in a waterfall or even create some light trails in an image. It is not as good as the night mode, but you can still get some long exposure shots using the live view. What I would recommend while using the night mode or even the live view for long exposure is to utilize a tripod so there's no camera shake. If you're somewhere outside and you do not have a tripod, try to lean your camera against something, a wall or a fence, and use self-timer mode so you can reduce the camera shake and get really crisp and sharp images. To wrap up these tips, I want you to be able to look around you. Look at all the different elements you can utilize to tell your story through a photo. Because yes, you are telling a story through one single image image. You don't have the luxury of lots of minutes like in a video to be able to get to the main part of your story. You have one frame and one image. So try to make the maximum use of whatever is around you in your surroundings to be able to bring the viewer's eye to the focus of your subject. Think about these questions while you're taking the shot. Why is this photo different? Why is this location unique? What do I want to convey to people as they are taking a look at the image? Do I want them to have that calm and relaxing feel as they're watching the sunset? Do I want them to feel the busyness in a city? Do I want them to feel the beauty of a plant or a flower that you have seen? Or the morning view that is just there on a leaf? Or the animal that you spotted in his natural habitat? What is it that you're trying to tell people. When you're taking a photo, you want to be able to bring the viewer's attention to a point of view that is just unique to you. Something at the location that nobody else could see, that nobody else had thought about, and that brings value to that particular photo. Try not to take the same shot that you have seen other photographers take of that location online because that already exists. Yes, I mean, you can always take that shot and have it as a memory, but try to think outside the box for that uniqueness that is just you. So let's talk about the apps that you can use to take images. The native app in the camera is great and you can definitely use that, especially in the iPhone 11. I think they've done a really good job with the native app. But the app that I actually really like is the Light room app. It is so easy to use and it gives you a lot more flexibility in terms of reducing your exposure, increasing or decreasing your shutter speed. I think it's a really good app to use. I also edit my photos in Lightroom. So I think that makes it a lot easier to shoot it in Lightroom and then edit in the same app. But it doesn't matter even if you shoot it in your native camera app, you can still import it into Lightroom and still edit it. Do you use your phone for photography? Comment below and let me know. Also DM me on my Instagram the pictures you took after watching this video. I would love to see what you've done. Hope you found this video useful. Join me in the next two episodes from this series where I look at still life in food and portrait photography just using your mobile phone. Give the video a thumbs up if you learned something or found this video useful. Subscribe if you haven't already and hit that bell if you want to be notified for all my future videos. Don't forget there are two more episodes from this series coming up and thank you so much and as always have an amazing amazing day. Bye bye. Is there enough light in the shot? Hmm. I can't tell. Let's see. Better? I think that's better. What do you think?